Alright, yeah, guys, so you wanted a uh, point of view drive? Well, let's do that. We'll display other info. Let's go. Now, I'm doing this without a rear bumper bar on, but uh, I do like to keep my promises when I say I'm going to do something. Here I go. Let's do this. So, you can see the speedo up top here. You see the time, you see the temperature. It's going to turn on some aircon. It's kind of hot here today. All right, and uh, you can see that everything still works. We'll go through cruise control, indicating. You can see the indicator in the corner there. I'm gonna take it slower so it doesn't shake as much, but at least you guys will see everything. Okay, I'm going 25 kilometers an hour. It does match the speedo, 30 now. Give it a little bit more. Yep. I have to admit, one thing I don't like about Mercedes is that it isn't like Toyota. Toyota, as soon as you jump in the car and you turn on aircon, it's cold straight away. Whereas with Mercedes, you have to up your revs in order for the aircon to kick in. I always notice that I can't just sit in the car and turn on aircon. It won't go cold until I rev it or I up the revs. So far, so good. Everything's working. Now we're going to try out cruise control. There isn't enough room for me to put on cruise control and maintain that speed so I'm gonna go on the highway so I can so you guys can see cruise control working all right here we go switch straight to Tiktronic Go back to D now, drive. It feels pretty nice. Okay, everything looks really good, you know. Uh, let's go cruise control now at, let's see, what do we got? All right, 61 kilometers an hour, 70, 80. All right, 80 kilometers an hour, cruise control. Let's see what it does. Picks up speed to 80. You can see the little green thing that popped up next to the digits. That's the cruise control number. And it's telling us right now that we are on we are set on 80 kilometers an hour climbing a hill now so that's probably why it's not going 80 yet all right so it's going a little bit faster than 80 but it's going to slow it back down there we are now it's sitting on 80 kilometers an hour i'm going to take this up for a little bit then i'm just going to do a u-turn and go back so you guys can see what it looks like while you drive i mean it's pretty cool let me see if I can switch the displays now so you can see the other display. All right, let's go uh, sport mode. Okay, here we are on sports mode now. We'll go back to our assistant. I like to leave it on other info, which gives you all this info, which is pretty cool. All right, we're still cruising at 80 kilometers an hour perfectly. I've left the radio off, but uh, it doesn't matter. You won't see anything related to music on here or navigation. All right, let's do a U-turn. Let's go to the last display so you guys can see that display at least. So here's the Vanguard display. It shows like this. Then we can also still put that info that we want to see so let's go other info here and there it is on the left hand side now right now I still have the AMG logo at the bottom but I'm getting rid of that with the next update that I do uh, if you guys want to keep that then you can get that still because they still offer it they have a few different files saved for the cluster so if you want that AMG logo, you're able to get that still. I might have to get fuel soon because I don't have much fuel. That's okay. Uh, I'm going to go back to the what I want to see. My type of uh, display themes. So I'm going to go back to classic. I think that's the best for me. It looks the 
best. It matches my 12.3 inch screen as well. And let's see, we'll go trip now. And uh, yeah, there's my odometer. And let's see if it is in sync with the trip. Right, so right now it's on 9.4 Ks. Okay, as soon as we get 116,654, once it goes five, see if it uh, matches. Right, we're still on 54. All right, there we go, 55 now, and it's on 20 kilometers. So if it goes to 21 kilometers and it goes 116,656, then we know that the reading is just right. How it counts up the kilometers. I'm going to make sure that it works properly. That's all. Okay, so I'm going to go up and 20. Yeah, there we are. 56 and we are on 21. That is perfect. You can tell that it works really well. So that's really good. I'm just going up and down this highway here so you guys can get a feel and a look of what it's like to have this cluster in your car, what it looks like at night time, how it responds to the way you drive, how it responds when you choose a certain display. So what else are we going to see here? This trip, we can sure so show this. It's really bright right now, so you can't really see, but uh, you guys get the picture. I think I better get some fuel display all right so we can choose eco info so it will just show all this info here now on the side we can switch between it real-time info and, or our speedometer that's what you can choose to show on the left hand side vehicle set here so you can choose all these things on or off blind spot detecting I don't have that lane smart lighting on or off dipped beams yeah brightness yeah, daytime running yes I have that running you can still go through the menu while you drive so that's a pretty cool little thing as well most of the time you can't go through your menu while you drive because obviously it's like unsafe tire pressure if you had this I believe it would show if you had this as an OEM feature as well as the adaptive cruise so if I use cruise control does it do anything here no it doesn't that's only if you have that feature I wish the adaptive cruise did work but I don't think I have that as a standard feature so that's probably why it doesn't work but that's okay honestly I'm not too fussed about all these other features the main thing is that it shows all your typical error messages and also that it reads properly like your fuel your coolant temperature your engine temp all that stuff that's the stuff that matters the most and if it can read most of that, then you're pretty much good. So it's showing me that my fuel is on the right hand side, which it definitely is. You can barely see it, but down the bottom corner here, you can see there's the fuel. But you can also change that. If your fuel happens to be on the left hand side for some reason, then you can change that as well. So that's good. Right, I'm just going to stop and get some fuel real quick. Alright, so now we've got a full tank of gas. That's really good. Almost anyways. Jeez, fuel is so expensive right now. I don't know how people are going to keep driving around when fuel is getting so expensive now. It's ridiculous. Alright, let's put back on our feature. Now also, the other good thing about putting on this feature where you see your coolant, your engine temperature, your coolant temp, as well as your transmission temp when you switch the car off so I'm gonna do that now I'm gonna switch the car off and I'm gonna switch it back on and you're going to see that you don't have to go back into it it actually stays in this menu so that's great because the last thing you want is for you to switch off your car turn it back on again and then have to reopen this just to see it again right so firstly I'll show you this stays the way it is right so now I switch off the car take the key out all right 
All right, now we'll turn it back on. Let's see what menu it turns back on then. All right, so here we are back in the, the mode. I've turned the car on, start the car, and just like that, it stays in this menu. So that's great. That's something that I really wanted. All right, and here's a little bit of the interior so you guys can see it. As you can see, the lights still work for the radio unit. The lights for the door, they all work as you can see there. They all work. You can see the door lights here all still work. Radio lights all work. Passenger side lights all work. Here's the lights for the dash. As you can see it all works, so that's good. All right, now let's just take the car back and uh, you guys will have your point of view. time we'll set cruise control so you can see that it works and cancel our cruise control now there we go when you push it all the way up it goes up in increments of 10 just like when you go down all the way it goes down in increments of 10 and if you go up slightly it goes up in increments of one as you can see so everything still works exactly the same it's just now you've got a different type of display that's really all it is when i go to manual mode you can see the gears are displayed down the bottom here d6 d5 d3 d4 d5 d6 and once more it goes back to d because it's only seven speed it also tells you how many kilometers you have left in your fuel tank you can change that to miles per hour remember i showed you guys in the other video that's the point of view drive of this digital cluster and you guys also notice there's lines here barely see it probably but wherever your el electrical pin is for your speedo or your rev meter there are lines that let you know that you are in that range so for instance right now it's at one a thousand rpm and it's got lines all the way up to number one here we're on 20 kilometers per hour and it's got lines all the way to 20 so that's how that works i have to say that i really do like this cluster i think it looks really nice i mean apart from all the little things that i had to do to get it to my liking which was changing the spelling and also removing a few things that I didn't want there like the teacup because my car doesn't have that rest function so I didn't want that teacup to always be there that's basically just letting you know that you need to rest for a bit let's see what high beam looks like you think that's too bright guys that's pretty normal I think that's not too bright normal lights high beam high beam on let's go straight yeah, that's pretty good. I didn't think that's pretty high at all. I don't know what someone else was saying when I flashed my high beams and they were saying that they were too high up that I had to adjust them back down. Well, you're not supposed to use high beams when anyone's around anyway. So really, have them as high as you want. You're not gonna use them when other people are around anyway. It's only to flash the road and to let people know of oncoming traffic, etc. Or, you know, if there are police on the road and stuff like that, so. It's not a big deal. I don't mind having them a little bit higher up if that's the case. It's gonna pull back in home and uh, we'll be done with this point of view video. Well, there you have it guys. That is the point of view driving that I wanted to show you guys. So I really hope you found this video helpful and uh, it helps you decide whether or not this is for you. If not, that's okay. I just always wanted to show you guys what is possible in a W204 and um, give you my honest opinion of what it's like. I mean, I like certain things that a lot of people don't like as well. So, you know, if there's something I like that you don't, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. If you hate something that I've done to the car, but I still like it, I can't help the way you feel. But as long as I like it, that's all that really matters. 
but this channel is also about showing you guys what's possible for a W204, the different types of mods out there for a W204. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mike's Vlogs, signing off. Bye for now, guys.